Hi all, Ben and Mimi here for the final instalment of the Kids Active Recess Westside Series. Western Bulldogs AFL player Mitch Wallace will take you through your paces in this footy session. He'll share some of his footy secrets and get you handballing like a pro. So grab your footy and your drink bottle. Here we go Mitch, handballing it to you. G'day everyone, it's Mitch Wallace from the Western Bulldogs. I can't wait to get started today. We're gonna to go through a number of things about football, about hydration, about being sun smart. I'm gonna do it with my brother Josh, and let's get into it. But before we get started, I'd like to pay my respects to the original custodians of this land. The Boon Warung, the Wada Warung, and the Woi Warung, to elders past and present. There are many ways to stay fit, active, and healthy over these times of isolation. I'm gonna go grab my brother, Josh, and we're gonna show you some of the ways you can work out. Josh, come on, mate, let's go. Now, come on, mate, there's so much activities we can do. Let's get excited, get your kid on, let's go. Josh and I have joined forces with Victoria University in the community and VU Sport to bring you a video about, one, making sure that you're sun smart and wearing the appropriate equipment, the importance of hydration and how drinking lots of water is really important if you want to get the best out of your body, but also stay hydrated throughout your play. Josh? We'll then be moving to uh, warm up and stretching, uh, putting some footy skills together, followed by some tricks. Josh, what hey, are you Mitch. doing? I'm stretching, mate. What's so important about stretching and warming up before you play? Yeah, what's well, a big thing in injury prevention? Uh, getting your muscles warm and relaxed before play uh, to perform at your best. Fantastic. Do you, do you mind if you take us through a few of the stretches yeah, you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just doing a quad stretch to start. So if you grab one leg, put one hand in the air, um, stare at something, can help you balance, or hold against the wall if you need to. Uh, hold to about five to ten seconds, then swap it over. So both legs? Make yep. sure you do both legs. Yep. Nice, so and what are yeah. some other muscle groups that you can do? Uh, hamstrings very important, especially in kicking um, and running. So an easy one is we could just walk through. A bit more of an active stretch? Yeah, absolutely, fantastic. So Josh, what's, what's a way that you can stretch your hamstrings? Because I know they're important in kicking and yeah. sprinting and running. Yeah, there's definitely one way to stretch while you're standing, is having one leg out and working your hands down your hamstring. Yep almost to your toe if you can, if not just holding around your calf ankle area. And then of course swap it up to the other leg. Yep. And how long do you reckon you should hold this stretch for? About five to 10 seconds as well, a couple each side. Yep, you should be able to get a little bit further each time. And what about your calves? Oh, calves, I get tired of my calves from, from running a lot. Yep, yeah, so another way is just down on all fours, like so. Yep. And just alternating each leg, pushing your heel to the ground. After a little bit, you can get a bit of a pump going, like you're doing there, Mitch. Interesting. Dude, that does really stretch them, doesn't it? Yep. Good work. Awesome. So, Josh, we've completed a few static stretches where we've been still. Yep. Uh, as we're getting warmer and warmer, we want to move into a, a, a full body stretch. So, if you're going to take us through some things such as star jumps, which are really good in getting a full body warm up. Yeah, well, a simple jog to start. Uh, I like to jog a lot at the start just to get the whole body flowing. Uh, and then, yeah, things like a star jump are great things to get your body pumping. Yeah, and if you're not at an oval, or you don't have access to huge grasslands, running around the backyard is a perfect way to get your full body warm. Yeah. Let's go. Woo! Well, that was good, Josh. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run through some full body exercises, again with the warm up, to make sure our full body is warm. So Josh, you're gonna do 10 star jumps with me? Let's, Let's count it. them out. All right. One, two, two three, three, four, five, five six, seven, seven, eight, nine, 10. Perfect. Beautiful. So we've done our star jumps. Josh, what's next? Uh, let's do a windmill. So this is really good for your lower back and hips, really opening up the body. So take a wide stance and swing side to side. Nice. How many of these, Joshy? Uh, 10. 10. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. So well, I'm really starting start to get loose now. Yeah, that's it. All right, we'll do a couple more, and then we'll be right into it. Okay, we're nearly ready to go. 
but we're going to play a quick game of Mitch Says. So Josh, I'll when Mitch says saying. it, you do it. <laughs> when Mitch doesn't say it, you're not allowed to do it. All right, and if go. I catch you out, you have to run another lap by yourself. Let's oh. go. Okay, let's go. Mitch says, run on the spot. Mitch says, stop. Mitch says, hop on one leg. Change the other leg. Ah, yeah! Got him, got him. On a lap. All right. Yeah, very good. You I'll got teach me, you to pay a bit more attention. <laughs> right. Okay, we're back, all right? Mitch Let's says, go. jump on two legs. Mitch says, do a circle. Mitch says, keep doing a circle. Mitch says, go the other way. Yeah, got you again! Thank you. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> Mitch says, rub your belly. Mitch says, pat your head. Mitch says, Rub your belly and pat your head. Ooh, that's a toughie. <laughs> Mitch says, change hands. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hands on hips. Got me. Oh. Run a lap. It's gonna be running all day, Joshy. Mitch says, do a quad stretch. Mitch says, hands on ears. Mitch says, close your eyes. Open your eyes. Did I get you? Ah. Uh, Mitch says, hands on hips. Mitch says, open your eyes. Mitch says, walk backwards. Walk forwards. Yes. Uh, Do it again. <laughs> Another lap, please. Ah. <laughs> so, Joshy. Make sure you have a big drink, mate. You've been running plenty of laps because you're no good at Simon Says. <laughs> I hope you guys are better than Josh is. But now, let's get stuck into some footy drills. I'm better at this stuff, let's go. So, when you go to football training, as you'll find out, there's plenty of cones out in the ovals. However, if you don't have access to cones, there are plenty of other items that you can use as markers. Today, I'm gonna use my pink and my white football boot along with Joshy's footy boots as yep. cones that you can play around. Hi guys, this segment is about how to handball. I've got my footy, beautiful sponsor, Victoria University, and there's a few key takeaways I want from this message. Okay, when handballing, I'm a, right, a left-hander, sorry, so I'm gonna make a fist with my left hand. My thumb is gonna be on the outside, never on the inside, because if it's on the inside, that's when you can hurt your thumb. So I've got my fist and my thumb on the outside. With my other hand, I want to make it flat like a pancake so the ball can sit nice and straight on it. And with my, with my left hand now, with my fist, I'm going to pull my elbow back as far as I can and then punch through. See how that spans straight? It is a lot easier for your teammate to mark. So again, I'll lay it flat in my hand, close my fist, cock my elbow and punch through. Perfect. And it's the same with the left and right hand. Josh, can you show us a right hand handball? Absolutely. Same again. Swap hands flat. Close fist, cock elbow, punch through. Perfect. Now let's take you through a game. Okay, so as I said before, you don't have to have cones to play drills. So what we've got here, we've got footy boots. So you can set your footy boots up in the backyard. I know your parents may not like it, but in the living room, anywhere you can find space. And what me and Josh have got the target as is a big drink bottle. So the target can be anything. Hopefully nothing that can break. But we've got a pump drink bottle here. So me and Josh, we're gonna go on our cones, on our shoes, and have a go at hitting the target. Josh, you're first. Oh, nearly. Oh, nearly. You can go as many times as you want. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Now try and hit it. Hopefully after a while, you've honed in your skills and you should be able to hit it. A quick game you can play to practice your handballing is handball up in the air. You're gonna see how many handballs you can get in 30 seconds. All right, Josh, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one.
You can change hands halfway through. Good to keep your feet moving as well. Keep you warm. Oh, stop. Time's up, Josh. Hey, how many did you get, do you reckon? 23. 23, okay. So that's your target next time is to get 24. So, Josh, handball, very important. But ball handling skills is also very important in the AFL. Who are some of the players that comes to mind when we talk about elite ball handlers? Uh, an obvious one's Marcus Bontempelli. Teammate of mine. Yep. Patrick Cripps and Scott Penderbury. You're not too bad yourself, Mitch. Thanks, Josh. Just having that ability to never fumble, uh, being clean with the footy, gives you more time during the game. Awesome. And there's many ways that you can practice your ball handling skills by yourself. So I'm going to take you through a few drills now that I did when I was younger and made me the player I am today. Beautiful. We've got the figure eight between our legs. Okay, so what we're going to do is make a figure eight between our legs. First of all, you start off slow. And as you get more competent, better at it, you go a bit quicker. And then you stop. See if you can go reverse, back the other way. See how many times you can get it, as fast as you can. And we'll stop there. Okay, there's one drill. Another drill. Josh, have you yeah. got one for me? Absolutely, similar to what Mitch was doing, but you're going to start with the ball in front, and you want to catch it to either side of your leg. Well, that looks quite advanced. Nice, Josh. I'm going to have a go at it as well. Oh, he's done it before. One of my favourites. <laughs> okay, another one. Just doing circles up and down your body. This one's hard, but it's really good for grip strength and it's really good for ball control, okay? So make a straight line with your body. Start around your ankles, go around your knees, go around your body, upper body, then around your head, and back down. Perfect. Josh, you got another one for me? Uh, I do, but I can't think of it. <laughs> So we've mastered the handball. Now it's time to get onto the kick. Again, be careful when kicking indoors because you don't want to break anything. But if you can go to a park or in the backyard, these are some of the skills involved in doing the kick. Okay, first of all, the ball. The straighter you hold the ball, the more likely it's going to spin straight. And I'll ask you a question, Josh, you can answer it. But why do we kick the drop putt the most, do you reckon? Uh, it's the most effective way, uh, easy to mark, and most accurate. Most accurate, perfect. Okay, so when kicking the drop punt, what I like to do is my middle finger on both sides of the ball. Hold them down the stitching like that. So you can hold the ball straight in your hands. There's three things. You want your head over the footy. You want to have momentum. And you want to drop that ball as close and as straight to your foot as possible. Okay? So I'll go through it. First of all, fingers on the seams. Head over the footy. I've got my momentum. And then I'm going to drop the ball as close to my foot as, po as possible. See my head? Still over my leg. Josh, take us through one of your kicks. Yep, so like Mitch said, your grip's really important. If you've got a smaller hand, you can slide your hand down the ball. Uh, just make sure you're holding it straight. And then as you're walking in, steps to where you're going, glide it down and kick through the ball. Perfect, Josh. So now that we've mastered the handballing and ball handling side of things, we're going to get onto kicking and focus on one kick in particular, the drop punt. Josh, tell me about the drop punt. Uh, the drop punt's the most accurate kick, I would say. Uh, it's very easy for your teammate to mark and a very effective way of kicking the ball. Fantastic. Okay, there's a few key points when mastering the drop punt. First of all, you want the ball to sit as straight as possible in your hands, okay? So the, so the cross on the, on the footy, you want that pointing straight up directly to the sky. With your two middle fingers, you want them along the stitching like so. And that allows you to hold the ball straight and get that stitching up to the sky. Next, we're going to focus on our head. So our head is going to be over the footy. The better your head is over the footy, the more control you have. Then, the next, momentum. You need to be walking forward when you're kicking. And finally, guiding the ball down. So you want the ball to drop as straight as possible. So it lands on that cross as well. And then, Point your toe. So point your toe through. Let's have a look at it. Putting that all in one go. Ball straight. My middle fingers on the stitching. My head is over it. I've got momentum. I'm dropping it straight. I'm pointing my toe. That's how you hit a target. Josh, show us your work. Again, very easy to mark because it spans straight. So head over the ball. 
hands straight. Put your hand more under the ball if you need to, if you have small hands. Momentum, staying over it, and kick through the ball. Great kick. So Josh, I know you fancy yourself with a kick for goal, for drop punt, but let's go through some players in the AFL that you think have the best drop punt techniques when kicking for goal. Yeah, so Jeremy Cameron, obviously, a uh, cold medalist. And then you've got Ben Brown, who has a real unique routine, but he knows he's comfortable and it works for him. I know you've got a good routine, Mitch, and that works for you, so talk us through how that goes. Yeah, so it's really important that you have your routine when you go for goal, because uh, you're in a number of different pressure situations when you are kicking for goal, let alone if you're six in your bedroom, in your lounge room, or you're in an AFL grand final like Dusty Martin, who kicked four uh, in last year's grand final. But my routine is pretty simple. Like I mentioned before, I get my head over the footy, I look at the cross and make sure it's pointing up to the sky. I take three steps, one, two, three, a further five, guide the ball down as much as I can and kick through. More often than not, they go through, but again, it's about hours and hours of practice, so you become a really good goal kicker. So guys, if you're at home and you don't have a partner to kick with, there are still ways that you can work on your kicking. I'll give you one tip. So if you're in your living room or outside in your backyard, there's still ways you can practice the kick and it's called kicking to yourself. So take a couple of steps, make them spin and then mark it yourself. Same principles apply. Head over the footy, watch the cross, make sure you've got a balanced straight football, momentum, point in the toe and the ball up. Make sure you practice left and right foot, because I know Sam Mitchell was an absolute gun at it, and that's what made him the player he was. So we've taken you through a lot of the skill aspects of footy, but one of the most important things of playing football is having fun and doing some tricks. So Josh and I are now gonna take you through some tricks that we've learnt over the journey. Let's go. Although it's a footy, it can still be used as a soccer ball. And a basketball. Josh has eyes in the back of his head. Yeah! Hello, well buddy. Another really important skill about playing footy is the ability to take marks. There's heaps of ways that you can practice marking and you don't have to have a friend to do so. Okay, so here's a couple of tips about marking. Oh! oh Kappa. Obviously, you're not gonna have a mate, but you can take your speckies on the couch. Josh, take us through some important aspects of taking the specky. Yep, a lot of things that I do with a specky is that time of your run. Uh, so as the ball's in flight, so me to me throw the ball up to be in a second. It's about time you're stepping in, feeling comfortable coming into the ball, off your preferred leg, knee up, and at the highest point. One way that I learned. So a good tip when you're practicing your marking is to make a W with your hands. W for Western Bulldogs. When you're throwing the ball up to yourself, make a W and grab the ball like that. There's no chance that ball's slipping through. You never know. One day, you do this for long enough, you could become the next Jeremy Howe. So Josh, what are you up to now? Just doing a cool down stretch, Mitch. Uh, just as important as a warm up. So find yourself some space when your session's done. Uh, spend five to 10 minutes just stretching all the muscles you did at the start. Uh, and it's great for injury prevention again and to look after your muscles as best as possible. Fantastic. It's just while we're cooling down and having a stretch, 
Uh, you wouldn't mind me asking a few questions, which I'm sure the audience will be interested in. Sure. Uh, first of all, how many games do you play for the dogs? So I'm around the 140 bar. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, if we get back from this, um, you know, this quarantine isolation period, I can I can get to the 150 by season's end. Beautiful. And you were always a dog growing up. Always a dog. Uh, my father played for the Bulldogs, so I was drafted under the father and son rule um, back in 2011. Yep. Uh, very lucky to, to, you know, to be able to support the dogs growing up and end up at the club that I love. And Mitch, you said you're always a bulldog. Any childhood heroes growing up? I know I had a few. Yeah, I, I did actually, and two in particular played for the Bulldogs. Yep. One was Chris Grant, who um, was our centre-half forward. I kicked 50 goals in his first season. I wore number three on my back as a, as a young tacker. And then as I grew older, uh, I really appreciated the, you know, the ability for Scott West to get the ball through all number seven for the Bulldogs. So two of my heroes were, were, were Bulldogs players. Yeah, beautiful. And you had a bit of success in your junior career. Where was that at? So that was at uh, St Bernard's yeah. uh, down in Essendon. Um, I was very lucky to, to have a really successful period of time during the under 12s, 14s and 16s, winning premierships there. But it was more the memories and the friendships that I created, which was a really important thing. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll never forget those times and, and be very grateful that I was a part of such a successful club. And you've got a lot of uh, young and exciting talent at the Dogs. Do you see the future being quite bright and yeah, exciting? Very exciting about our, our future down at the Dogs. Uh, obviously, we've got a young forward line led by uh, Aaron Norton, who yep. you know is a contested marking beast. And we've got our skipper in the middle, Marcus Montepalli, who, you know, not being biased, I believe to be one of the best players in the competition. Yep. And then we've got really, you know, young attacking high defenders. Um, and Alex Keith, a, a recent um, draftee to our club. You know, our spine's looking very strong and, and we should be able to have sustained success over a really long period of time. Beautiful. And you're uh, becoming a bit of a goal kicker and a more probably forward line player. Uh, is that where you see yourself in the... Yeah, I, I think you have to adapt and you have to be, you know, be able to play heaps of different positions. And you know, I started off as a midfielder. I, I think I still yeah. can hold my, you know, my talents in the midfield. But you know, if the team needs a, you know, a forward, which I put my hand up for, uh, that's where I see myself playing. And I do love to kick a goal. How many are you on? Uh, I'm on about 80, so I want to get to 100 by season's end. So it's really important to warm your upper body up as well, Josh. Take us through some upper body stretches. Absolutely. So an easy one's just a, a cross arm stretch. Stretching all your back, lat, shoulder, bicep. Oh, I can feel that through there. Yeah. Both sides? Yep. Every stretch is very important that you do equally on both sides, Mitch. You know that. Yep. Uh, another one is over the back. Bringing your elbow over the top. Oh, yeah. It really opens up your upper body. It does. And swap it over again. Give it a little shake out, you reckon? That's it. Beautiful. Awesome. So that just about wraps up today's proceedings. But first of all, Josh, what was your highlight of the day? Highlight of today would have been the uh, skill component, Mitch. I love the games and around the handball and kicking, followed by the importance of stretch and warm up. Fantastic. So in conjunction with VU Sport and Victoria University in the community, thanks for tuning in today. I know Josh and I had a lot of fun and we hope you did too. Uh, be sure to check out all the available offers that VU Sport have and keep tuning into this segment in the future. Thanks guys. Cheers guys.